The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Friday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading coming into a long weekend. Martin Luther King Day on Monday. Markets closed. But boy, they're not closed today, folks. We got some action continuing the run we had yesterday, putting the S&Ps on a 15 minute. Not that long ago. You back things up 24 hours ago and you're talking about almost 100 and what 15 yeah 115 s p points we were trading higher quite the sell-off on the retail sales miss this morning we'll get into that in a moment we have the nasdaq 100 down 110 points right now that's seven tenths percent you get the s p seven tenths percent and you get the dow right at seven tenths percent and guess what you get the russell nine tenths percent a little bit more negative action bitcoin rebounding nicely from thirty nine thousand. you make it up to almost forty five thousand this morning we're back at forty two thousand three hundred you have ethereum at thirty two sixteen this morning we jumped to crude Crude holding up relatively well with the market volatility. Crude spikes to 83.35. 83.35 this morning. Uh, we've pulled back a bit. Solid dollar, really, from that pullback. Look at the volatility just this morning. 6 a.m. Eastern time, 83.35. You dive down $1.50. We've bounced a bit to 82.41. And the gold contract up a little bit, up about 4 bucks to 18.25. We jump to the all-important notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield. We're up one tick, but we're up. I mean, you look where we were at six in the morning this morning. You're up a solid 12 ticks in the 10 year right now. You got a 10 year approaching 1.7% as we rise in price and the yield shrinks 1.7%. We're approaching that 10 year as you are positive by one tick. But again, volatility, you're talking about 12 ticks just in the last three hours. Let's jump over to the VIX as we got some negative action cascading from yesterday into today. The VIX trading at 2160 Monday spike 2333 and taking a look at these markets on a daily basis before we jump to the economic news I've talked about the channel lines I'm keeping them up there while we chop around on this bottom line I mean where this bottom line falls you could make the case that maybe all of these tails are forming a little bit of a better region slightly lower right I mean, when you're talking about a form of linear regression, folks, it is an art, not a science. If you're drawing channels, there is no exact scientific model. If there was a scientific model, they would have an exact calculation that you use to draw the exact channel that you use to be profitable. That's not the exact way that it works. Uh, there is personal bias. You have to set them. But as you can see, depending on where you set this, we're at a critical level on those S&Ps, as we've have been on numerous occasions, 4617, not that long ago, folks, January 4th, we were trading at about 4800. The last two days, quite the sell offs that we have going on in the S&Ps given up basically almost 3% we're approaching in that time. Okay, let's jump over to the retail sales numbers. Lots going on here. We have a drop of 1.9%. Well worse one way to put it, projected 0.1% decline, broad with 10 of the 13 major categories weakening. Uh, the overall purchases decreased 1.9% after a re revised 0.2% gain a month earlier. That's revised down one tenth percent. It was 0.3% too. So you got a downward revision on top of the miss. The figures are not adjusted, adjusted for inflation. So imagine you have inflation spiking, you have the same goods costing more, and even with the same goods costing more, you're seeing the value of overall purchases declining. That's an exacerbated form of a decline then, because if prices were flat, you would be de declining even more, right? Probably. At least that is the theory. The median estimate was looking for a 0.1% drop. Uh, the year-end slide in retail sales sets up for a tepid handoff to the first quarter. It was quite a banner uh, year. Now, let's jump around because there's a couple different parts of this. I mean, you're talking about a year. Yeah, excluding autos, okay? We all know the story with autos. This one almost a little bit more startling and maybe indicative of the broad economy. Excluding autos, you had sales falling 2.3%. The market was looking for an increase of 0.3%. In addition to the weak number, they talk about the revision there. 
Uh, yeah, but here's the number. When you talk about the year, considering that the sales numbers are not adjusted for inflation, it points to a slow ending to what had been otherwise a strong 2021 in which sales rose almost 17 percent from the pandemic scarred 2020. Uh, yeah, they talk about the CPI number in there. They talk about that, etc. Now, restaurants and bars, which posted a 41.3 percent annual gain in 2021 to lead all categories. They saw a decline of 0.8 percent for the month. Gas stations were a close second for the year with a 41 percent surge in sales. They had a 0.7 percent decline. Uh, fuel costs were moving lower. Not sure that'll be the case in January with crude back near eighty three dollars. Gas prices fell 0.5 percent to close out the year when prices at the pump soared 49.6 percent. Remarkable. Now, jumping back to the different categories of the number, 10 of the retail, 10 of the 13 retail categories showed declines in receipts last month, led by, led by non-store retailers, which includes e-commerce. Those sales, 8.7 percent from a month earlier. Department store receipts declined 7% after a 5.5% drop in November. Furniture stores, electronics outlets, sporting goods establishments also fell. Restaurants and bars, the report's only services-oriented category, uh, dropped 0.8%, as we just talked about as well. Motor vehicles, 0.4%. Automakers struggled to meet demands, putting it lightly. The government's report showed retail sales, excluding gas and motor vehicles, slumped 2.5%. Uh, the control group, which are used to calculate GDP. That excludes food services, auto dealers, building material stores, and gas stations. That's a lot. You're talking about a fall of 3.1%, though. That number, when you take out all of those numbers, uh, <clears throat> may be more indicative of a true retail perspective of what people are spending on the retail purchases they are making. Uh, Overall, 2021, total retail sales climbed more than 19% compared to the prior year. Retail sales in 2020, boy, we just had like a full stop on sales when people just adjusted to a new life, whether it was March, February, March, really March and April, adjusting to that new normal. Nonetheless, those numbers hit at 830 and the market sells off pretty quickly, putting things back on a five minute chart to see the escalation this morning. We were already coming into negative territory on that number. Um, and we were trading at 46.24, so we were already in quite a little sell-off coming into this number in the market. I mean, yesterday's action, right? Quite the sell-off indeed on numerous fronts. You got to sell off right out of the gate. You got to sell off at about noon, and then you got to sell off to end the day that began about 2 p.m. It did not stop. You traded down a solid almost 60 points from 4,700 down to approaching 46.40 at the close, and you accelerated into the close with volume. I mean, when I got off the program. <laughs> Yesterday, I mean, just like I got off the program and we were trading at 4730 in the S&Ps uh, just yesterday. And we're trading 110 points below that price level. Now, that sell off began at 10 o'clock, literally right on the dot. All right. So we get retail sales. You see the impact it's having over there. Uh, interesting. Right. What happens in terms of these are starting to see some of the effects of some of the comps. We had a year where sales are up 19 percent. But you're dealing with some comps where we're coming into much more normal numbers. Um, and, you know, you're going month over month. But to beat those numbers from last year, to carry that out, you're going to see similar things happen when we talk about the CPI number. It is very difficult to maintain a 7% number on CPI. When you're dealing with comps that for the next couple months, year over year basis, yeah, we're going to be at 7%. But as we go through the year... We'll find out. We got some bank earnings to go over. JP Morgan trade lower. We'll be right back. Folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24 7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got JP Morgan up here. JP Morgan, Morgan falls on trading revenue slump. Quite the pullback. We closed yesterday at about 168. Let's pull up the chart. I saw a chart. I saw earlier trading at about 162, and the slide continues down to 160.65. Quite a haircut when you look at these banks. You pull up the daily. Now, the daily is not going to register the action overnight just yet, but you're talking about 160. So you're going to open uh, right at this price area, kind of right where we've been oscillating around for the better part of a while. You get back a lot of those gains. Uh, we're talking about $8. You're talking about what? Four to five percent. You're going to open negative on JP Morgan. Now, getting into the numbers. Fixed income trading revenue slides are bigger than expected, 16%. 1% drop in both commercial and consumer loans, a declining trading revenue steeper than analysts expected. Shares of the company dropped after the former reported firm reported a 16% slide in fixed income trading revenue, worse than the 13.5 the market was looking for. The number I keep my eye on, though, expenses rising double digits from a year earlier as compensation costs increase. The firm said it to expect costs to rise about set to about 77 billion dollars this year uh surprisingly weak and we're hampered by uncharacteristically poor expense management uh that's some consultant out there talking about the real surprise came in the five percent increase in non-interest expense which looks difficult to justify referring to the jump from the third quarter the results offer a look at how the u.s economy fared in the final three months including as highly contagious omicron yeah uh and jp morgan is lower there earnings guidance here we go Net interest income excluding the market's business to be $50 billion for the year, higher than 2021. Total re trading revenue fell 11%. The market was looking for a 9% drop. Um, fixed income business was the biggest loser. Equities also declined, though, falling 2% to $1.95 billion. Mergers and acquisition, acquisition fees. How about that one? 86% rise to $1.56 billion. That was a beat. Uh, helping push the firm's net income to $10.4 billion compared with expectations of $9 billion. I mean, it's pretty remarkable that you bring in net income. Income is what matters most. $10.4 billion, market was looking for 9 and your stock drops 4% for a bank. Uh, Diamond, earlier this week, loan growth on the business side will probably return to normal, while consumer loan growth will return to normal. It may just take another 6 to 9 months for J.P. Morgan. So J.P. Morgan, you're going to open down about 160 this morning. The bank's getting a little bit hit. We jump over to Wells Fargo. 
Wells Fargo was trading higher. We'll see how they are trading. Fourth quarter revenue tops estimate profit jump. Seems like Wells Fargo. I was just talking about yesterday. Might be in a little bit of a recovery from the woes they've faced over the previous years. Wells Fargo, $1.25 a share. Market was looking for $1.13. How about a beat on revenue of about $2 billion? 20.856. Market was looking for 18.824. Net income? An 86% increase. Uh, they get to a reserve release of $875 million in there. Lending began to pick up in the second half of 2021 with 5% growth in loans from its consumer and commercial portfolios in the final six months. Uh, and Wells Fargo, a little bit of a flip side action to JP Morgan. And yeah, you were higher. You gave it up. Now you're barely higher by about 40 cents to 46.42. You take a look at Wells Fargo, as I was talking about, though, quite the year. You back it up. That's January 15th at 32 bucks. We're going to open today at 56. Now, City, uh, in the likes of JP Morgan, that's the last year. You've popped nicely from about 57. You've had a nice start to the year from 60 to 67 as rising yields, giving the banks a little bit of an advantage, but you're going to get back some of that. There's your pre market action as City out with their numbers trading lower. You jump over to City. There's the article. Fourth quarter profit declines 26% is the number for City there. 18% year-over-year increase in operating expenses, 18% uh, to $13.5 billion for the quarter. That's quite a number when you're talking about almost a 20% year-over-year increase in operating expenses. Now, I'm not sure if that's impacted greatly by the comps they're dealing with last year at this time, but nonetheless, it is a real increase. Earnings per share, though, still beat. 146, but not clear if that's comparable to the 138. Not sure why that makes sense, but 17 billion versus 16.75. Net income, though, dropping 26%, probably a factor of year over year increases of 18% to 13.5 billion. Quite a, a number there in the big way. Uh, global consumer banking business saw revenue decline 6% year over year to just under 7 billion. North America region, revenue fell by 6%. Not good when you see declining revenues across the board. When you're talking about global consumer banking, declined 6%. North America, revenue fell by 6%. Uh, in Asia, revenue dropped by 9%. Latin America, 4%. Expenses with the, within the bank's global banking division surged by 33%. That's pretty staggering. I mean, if you're operating a business and you got a $13 million expense budget, well, your expenses just went up to $13.3 million. And there's lots of companies, folks, out there with a million dollars expenses, easy. And you're talking about it is very difficult if your expenses are costing you a million bucks and all of a sudden they're costing you $1.3 million. That's quite an increase, as we all know. Uh, for 2021, net income nearly doubled to $21.95 billion, uh, while full-year revenue declined by 5%. And sitting and open a little bit lower. You're trading uh, 6570 from 6872 this morning for City. All right, let's jump around to some of the fang stocks. You get the NASDAQ 100 down 125 this morning. You're going to have Amazon approaching 3200 on the open, 3205. We jump to Apple shares. Apple, quite a pullback uh, from the recent 180. Two and change, $3 trillion mark. We're almost coming back to Monday's lows. We're at 170.80, down more than a dollar overnight. You jump to Microsoft shares. Yeah, Microsoft, quite a give back yesterday from 320 to 305. This thing got punished in a big way. You're down to 303 from Microsoft. We take a look at a, a daily. Taking a look at the run that we had for the final quarter, pretty remarkable. You've now given back almost $50 for Microsoft shares. And putting this on a little bit of Fibonacci to see where we're at, you're just crossing the 618 of the entire run that you had. If you want to, uh, you might want to see that hold. If that does not hold, I imagine that we're going right back to 280 for Microsoft shares. Quite a pullback yesterday for sure. We jump to Google, see how they're opening up. 2755 down about seven bucks for Google shares. There's your action overnight for Google. We jumped to some of the social media. Or Meta, Meta, back to 322. You were down to 315 earlier in the week. Facebook, I imagine, is going to be a company that's going to be particularly volatile over the next three, five, ten years, folks, as the metaverse develops. You're going to see technology improve. You're going to see the market get excited about that technology, whether they come out with a new Oculus, right, whether there's just leaps and bounds made of 
what Facebook is doing, the offerings that they have. I mean, you have to remember the reach they have, the billions of people that they reach through their social media network. They're going to be trying to transform that instead of you logging onto Facebook and scrolling every day, that you snap on your headset and jump into the metaverse every day. And they have the reach to be talking to people. But guess what's going to pull them back when they start talking about costs? Because there's going to be a lot of costs going into this equity. Um, but Zuckerberg is a very right, bright guy, no matter what you think of him. And he's seen the way that he's become one of the richest people in the world through advertising. And guess what? Virtual real estate, virtual real estate for advertisers, it's going to be as important as virtual real estate for advertising on the Internet. And he's trying to get ahead of it. So we'll see where we go. But volatility is going to be there. And you're seeing it play out right now for Facebook shares down about four bucks on the open to 322.22. All right, folks, it's going to be an interesting open. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes for the opening bell. We get the S&Ps down 33 coming into the long weekend. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps down about seven tenths percent in the red, trading negative 28 points at 46.23. NASDAQ 100 down just more than half a percent. Markets getting a little bit of a lift on the open right now. 15,401. Markets only been open for about 30 seconds. Uh, we'll jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares this morning 
trading down about 1%, down uh, just over 1,000. We bounced right at 1,000 pre-market at 1,019. You give back 100 bucks, quite a day for yesterday, uh, to the negative side for Tesla from 11.15, trading at 10.15 basically this morning. Now, I bring up Tesla. Make sure I get this article. Come on. There we go. Dogecoin. So after Elon Musk says it can be used to buy Tesla merchandise, it's pretty fascinating that the richest man in the world is out there selling trinkets for his company in worthless crypto that he's pumping and dumping. That's my take on things, folks, okay? Uh, but you jump over it. Now, let me, get, uh, let me get everything I got up here. Where's my... Well, this is the article first as I jump around. Excuse me one second while I make sure. Here we go. Uh, so this is the article that talks about Doge jumps 9% after Elon says that they will accept Doge for their merchandise. Now, here is the merchandise, folks, okay? It's a cyber whistle that looks like their truck. Inspired by the Cybertruck, the limited edition Cyber Whistle is a premium collectible made from medical grade stainless steel. Medical grade stainless steel for your Cyber Whistle with a polished finish. The whistle includes an integrated attachment feature for added versatility. And 300 Doge is all it will cost you. Well, Doge is trading right now at 19 cents, folks. If it's trading at 20 cents for simple math, you're talking about a $60 whistle made of medical grade stainless steel, $60 whistle. Uh, it says a lot though, that Mr. Elon Musk is taking Doge for his trinkets that are vastly overpriced to put it lightly and not taking them for his cars, which are right now seeing delays in shipments, et cetera. Nonetheless, it's pretty remarkable folks. One of the, one of the, the captions this morning uh, reading about this story the trillionaire is selling a whistle shaped like a truck that will never be sold for a currency that is a joke of a joke. I mean, that's, that pretty much sums it up, which is pretty remarkable. Nonetheless, uh, they're sold out. 300 Doge. Uh, and uh, Elon Musk continues to make headlines. This market's making headlines. Check out the NASDAQ 100 popping. You're up... Uh, I mean, you're up almost 100 plus points from where we were, just 845 this morning. You were trading at a low of 15,000. Yeah, you just popped uh, 130 points in the NASDAQ 100. They almost just don't look as large, the moves, because we just had a sell-off that was 700 points. But this move this morning, let's even put it on a one minute to exacerbate the move we have. You pull up the 830 number, we're trading at 15,380. NASDAQ 100 is now 50 points above where we were trading at coming into that retail sales number. You have the S&Ps just kind of chopping around where we were at 8.30. You trade down to 46.06. We gain back those 15 points, back to 46.22 right now. The Dow, though, continuing to sell off. Quite a divergence. Got the Dow, 35,650. Those retail sales, maybe the market a little worried for some of the retail players. We jump over. Walmart down about a third of a percent. Point being, you know, if you're a growth stock, Target down 1.5%. Let's see. TJ Maxx down 1.6%. Kohl's down 3%. Yeah, these are going to be impacted, these companies, when you see a retail number that is that big of a miss in terms of what they're doing. Look at Kohl's on that pullback to start the year. Uh, really end last year from November 18th at 62 bucks. You're trading at 47.82. Okay, let's see what else I got pulled up here in terms of talking about uh, inflation numbers. That's the retail sales number here. Yeah, this one's an interesting one, uh, talking about the impact powerful firms have as we're in an inflationary period right now. Uh, there's been quite a consolidation of power players in many different industries, causing there to be a consolidation of power within few players. Now, the example they use in this article, talking about inflation risk getting sticky as big firms flex pricing power, is Coke and Pepsi. Uh, you, you take a look at Coke and Pepsi, which raised prices within days of each other in July and subsequently recorded substantial margins. Or you have the meatpacking industry where President Biden's trying to curb some of the power of conglomerates out there for the meat prices, which rose really 15 percent last year. Uh, you're left with a couple of giants in each industry. Then this crisis happens, demand contracts. And because these other guys are no longer there to create competition, what happens they can raise prices much easier than if they had smaller players in the market. 
Now, this is a graph of market power talking about U.S. industries have become increasingly concentrated in the hands of a few players. As I expand that out, that's the percentage change in concentration. And you look even from 2000. Now, I would need to get somebody on here to explain what this means when you go from zero to 100 percent in terms of percentage change in concentration. Um, but you're basically bumping up against it. And there's many industries that used to have a lot of players and now they have basically a few in that industry. And in the time of inflation, that would not be might might not be a good thing for consumers overall. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? Yeah, this one's an interesting one. Okay, we're talking about crypto. We're talking about the metaverse, right? Now, this article out here talking about stocks and property will be turned into NFTs, venture capitalist says. Uh, Bill Tai, venture capitalist, not familiar, uh, but he must have been on CNBC out there. Company stocks and real estate will be among the many things that get turned into non-fungible tokens in the future. Tech investors said that it's going to happen and it's not even a question. It's one of those that he's putting. It's a matter of when, not a matter of if. And I would tend to agree because there's a lot of things, folks, that you can say. It's a matter of if, um, when, not a matter of if. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when is the expression, right? As in, it's not a question of well, if it's going to happen. It's a question of when it's going to happen. I can tell you right now, flying cars, self-driving flying cars, they're coming. It's not a question. If you don't think you're dialing up a self-driving car to pop up into your front door like the Jetson style, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you are if you live long enough because it's happening. It's just a matter of when. When you look at stocks, right? A stock is a certain asset, okay? It's a it's a, a single asset. I mean, if you're for an example, I mean, my simple fundamental understanding of this entire technological space, okay, is that just imagine if TFNN wanted to go public. Well, what do we do? We push out 100 shares of ownership. Each share represents 1% ownership in TFNN, okay? I imagine just from a simple understanding that I could somehow create some type of NFT that's a one-of-a-kind asset in a digital world. Each of those NFTs represents a 1% ownership as one share of TFNN. And those NFTs are able to be traded on the Ethereum blockchain or the Cardano blockchain. There's no reason why that can't happen. Now, I barely even understand what an NFT is. So if I can simply understand that an NFT is a one-of-a-kind asset, the crypto blockchain, or just the blockchain, is allowing for the transfer of those assets in a expedited, inexpensive way. Okay, it's going to happen. I mean, I think all the time, talk about as a trader, right? I think all the time as a trader, why are markets closed over the weekend? Now, I don't want to work over the weekend, okay? But it seems like in today's technological space where and people do work over the weekend if they're not working during the week. I work five days a week, you know, with pretty long days out there. So I don't want to work all weekend, even though I'm working. We're going to finish this up because you imagine there's no reason why shares can't get traded over the weekend. If you're developing a fintech world on NFTs of ownership of shares. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got quite a market right now. s and is negative by 19 points still. Quite a little bounce off the lows this morning. NASDAQ 100, though, back in the green. Quite a pop indeed. We put it back on a 15-minute. You're talking about a low this morning of approaching 15,300. We just popped almost 200 points, folks. You zoom it in. Market's only been open for 12 minutes, and you're up more than 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 right now. Back to where we were at about 6.30 a.m. this morning. The Dow selling off, though. Dow down almost a full percent right now down nine tenths percent and you get the Russell down about five tenths percent jumping over to the market watch I'm going to take a look at some of the moves we have going on here the banks really hitting the Dow right this is why I love this feature on the thinkorswim platform uh, you jump over to the market watch you pull up the indices you can see the heat map I said geez what's happening to the Dow right well what's happening to the Dow is you get JP Morgan down five percent you got Goldman down 2.8 percent you got Verizon down three quarters percent you got Johnson and Johnson down a full percent now what matters here is that the Dow, for whatever crazy reason, is a price-weighted index, right? So you got J.P. Morgan, $160 stock today. You're down $8, okay? Home Depot is down 1.5%, but you're talking about a stock that's trading at almost $400. They have a monumental impact. Home Depot is down $6 in price action, down 1.5% because it's trading at $380. Uh, you're getting a skewed impact there. You got Disney down 2.8% over there. Coca-Cola is in the red by two-thirds percent over there as well. On the flip side of it, you have some of the stocks that are barely in the green. Apple's up three-tenths percent. You got Microsoft up seven-tenths percent. But again, Microsoft, both these stocks, I mean, it's just so skewed. We've went over it before. A price-weighted index makes zero sense whatsoever. As opposed to, let's jump over to the NASDAQ 100. We got a lot of green there, folks, which is why you get the NASDAQ 100 up 35 points and you get the Dow down 300 points. Uh, the banks not a part of the NASDAQ 100, which is a big part of the negative action you're getting today, especially hitting the Dow. We jump over to the S&P 500, and you see the banks weighing on things for sure, but nothing to the likes of what we're getting on the tech sector. NVIDIA is up 1.2% there. You got Microsoft and Apple and Google. Um, because you're not in the Dow, you got the market caps putting an impact on this index with the weight that they have because of the size of the companies they have, deservedly so. And let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. You got Amazon popping a good $40 on the open. You're up half a percent for Amazon shares. Microsoft up half a percent right now. You got Apple up two thirds, uh, excuse me, a quarter percent, two tenths percent, a little bit more. You jump over to Google shares up three quarters percent. There's a pop for you, 50 bucks on Google on the open. And we jump to Meta up about half a percent as well. And as I was saying, who what happened there? Walmart. So much for the retail sector. That is quite a pop on the open of almost $2 on Walmart. My goodness. Yeah, and it's been a run right from the open. There's a minute chart for Walmart shares. 
quite a divergence here because you jump over to Target. Yeah, Target down 1.3%. So it looks like Walmart uh, avoiding the depths of despair of the retail hit so far. Interesting action. Wonder why that market has such a divergence of Walmart versus the other players uh, in the retail sector that are down dramatically. I mean, even you jump to some of the smaller ones, right? They're really down. Jump to Kohl's and TJ Maxx, et cetera. Kohl's down 2.5%. TJ Maxx down 1.8%. Yeah, I mean, the market's probably a little bit worried that you get such a retail sales pullback right now. And so what does that allow you to do? That allows you to do to potentially go into growth stocks again as the NASDAQ 100 surges higher. But don't miss the account of banks and that they're having because the slide here is very real. With J.P. Morgan escalating even from there, you're down 5.6%. You just give up 10 bucks in J.P. Morgan, man. You're back just like that, folks. If you think you missed the run on banks, this might be a buying opportunity in a year we got yields rising. But you got to pay attention to rising costs. I think J.P. Morgan had 11% increase in expenses. Uh, City had 18%, almost a 20%. They had 33% in one quarter, I think it was. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but they had big, big increases to their expenses. But you just got quite a haircut if you're looking for a position in J.P. Morgan. Now, you back things up on a weekly, okay? Quite a miss from where we were earlier. We were talking about trading at 159 two years ago in J.P. Morgan. We're trading at 140 before COVID. Not that bad of a scenario, especially not that bad if you're worrying about some volatility this year because you're getting a dividend out of these companies, and you're coming into a year where now we got yields back at 1.7%. We're probably going to get a few rate hikes this year. Uh, we will see. But nonetheless, a pullback for JP Morgan, a pullback for Citi as well. Uh, Citi getting a pop, though. Up about buck fifty from where we were. So you cut that loss in half. Citi down 2%. Wells Fargo, the strongest one out there. Look at that run. Up 1.7% for Wells Fargo. Bank of America down 2.6% from Bank of America. Now, they are out with their earnings when? Next week, yeah. Bank of America out with their numbers next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, they'll be out with their numbers for Bank of America. All right, let's see what else I got going on. Retail sales, stocks, we talked about that. We talked about the number in J.P. Morgan. Talked about the there. Yeah, interesting one on Bill Ford out this morning. Ford's been quite a run recently, and they talk about Bill Ford amassing even greater position uh, on that company, doubling down on four shares, and quietly amassing more control of his grandfather's company in the process. Uh, he's the company's biggest individual shareholder, 2.3 million shares of the company's common stock, okay? But how many Class B shares do you own, which have uh, all the voting power? More importantly, he owns 16.1 million, or 23% of Class B shares, that's quadruple what he had 10 years ago, okay? Now, the Class B shares can only be held by family members, I believe I get down here. So the uh, biggest holder of the automaker's Class B shares carries super voting powers that have allowed the Ford family to retain control of the company. Class B shares account for 2% of Ford's outstanding stock. They control 40% of the voting power. And yes, Class B shares are only available to family members. Now. He got these shares from being on the board, though. So it's not like he's spending a ton of money. Now, most of the time, like we saw Elon Musk do, when you exercise options, you'll usually sell a portion of that position to pay for the taxes. Otherwise, you have to take chunks of money from elsewhere to pay for the taxes of that transaction to not have to sell any of the options that you exercised. So what he's done is he's not sold any of the position in exercising the, auction, the options, um, and this is what he says here. He acquired 412000 Yeah, they do. T Sorry, I want to get the part that they talk about that it has to do with basically his action of being around on the board. Yeah, nonetheless, it does state that, and it talks about in here that instead of cashing in on the $18 million in proceeds, he would have gotten from the exercising options. He just paid $20.5 million in cash as well as taxes on the gains to hold on to the shares. You know, it's a tantalizing article a little bit. It's always nice to see the owner of a company trying to maintain control and not selling shares. Um, but I wouldn't read too much into that. I mean, that's a company that's been beaten down. They're finally on the run. That F-150 looks to be a huge success. They've traded from 12 bucks up to 24 
But you back things up, folks. I mean, this stock was at 38 bucks in 1999. You've been chopping around between 5 and 15 bucks. Uh, you know, from where you are, you look at where he was in 2012. You had this equity trading at about $25 in between, a, no, excuse me, $10 to what? Yeah, $10 basically. 10 to $12 for the entire year of 2012. So I don't blame him for not selling those shares, thinking he has more value. And guess what? Now it's trading at 24. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by 10 points. All the markets catching a little bit of a bit on the open right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 up an even 50. You're talking about basically right up to where we were at about 2 a.m. Eastern time. You're now above where we were at the close, obviously, being in positive territory. And you're talking about 200 points, folks, from where we were at 8.50 this morning. 15,322 how about 15,538? Quite a turnaround. The Dow being bogged down by some of the banks this morning, still Dow down about six tenths percent. We jump over to those banks, see how they're reacting. Catching a little bit of a pop, but nothing too dramatic. Kind of hanging right where we were. JP Morgan, right where you opened almost, down about 4.7 percent. Wells Fargo, the strongest one out there with their numbers this morning, down 2.2 percent. And we jump to City Shares, catching a little bit of a pop, but still down 2.4 percent. Was it BlackRock out with their numbers? 
numbers? Yeah, BlackRock out with their numbers as well this morning, down 1.7% for BlackRock. We jump to the retail. Interesting action, to say the least, on Walmart. Catching a $2 pop for Walmart. Not sure, uh, no real news on Walmart this morning, but retail. Disappointing. And Walmart, though, catching a bid while the other retail stocks suffered. You got Target down about nine tenths. I went over Kohl's and TJ, TJ Maxx. We jumped to some of the home stocks. Lowe's is going to be lower, uh, down 1.6% this morning. You got Home Depot down 1.6% as well this morning. And man, NASDAQ 100. Look at Apple. Apple just traded up almost $3 from where you were at 8 a.m. this morning. No. Exactly $3, more than $3. Apple just added $50 billion in market cap in the last two hours. <whistles> it's just some huge numbers when you're dealing with 16 plus billion shares of an equity. Apple at 173, you're only 10 bucks away from basically all time highs. We jump over to Microsoft, catching a little bit of a pop, but well off the, the high, um, the cascade you had yesterday, Microsoft at about 310. We jump over to Amazon shares, up about half a percent right now. Let's jump to some of those growth stocks that have gotten pummeled. Man, this stock, Zoom, whew, the pain doesn't end, man. This stock barely positive today, but that is just, just straight to 160 for Zoom. Roku shares catching a pop, but same deal. It's tough territory for those stocks that have gotten hurt. Roku, new lows, 31 bucks. Thanks for starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got live programming all day, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We got Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12, Dave White at 2, Tom